I never, I don't even know a time where I wasn't in love with writing and words and the, and the, the life of what I like to call the life of the mind. You know what I mean? Like I was very much an insular kind of child who lived in her imagination. You know, I would make up very elaborate stories in my mind and like I would entertain myself for hours. Like people, my mother would have to come find me. <laughs> She's like, what are you doing in here? So no, that was always in me. That was never as a, a reaction or a response to anything. I think that was just like the seed that was in me when I got here. I always felt like I had to do other things besides what I really wanted to do to make money for the, mo the majority of my childhood, you know? So people were like, you can't make no money being a writer. You can't make any money being an artist. You know, like that was not even a part of the lexicon of thinking, right? But I always wanted to engage people around art and writing, and I always wanted to play around those kinds of concepts. So I always had friends who were like-minded mm -hmm. and who were willing to play. Um, in Dayton, I had a collective that I was in called Mad River Poets, right? And they were mostly, they were mostly dudes, but we always, we would write together, we would have writing sessions together. You know, this was before I moved to Chicago. You know what I mean? Um, my, you know, a lot of good friends that I'm still close with to this day were in that collective. And, you know, we would write, we would perform at the little bars and stuff, you know what I'm saying? Like, so we always, I always had creative community, artistic community, wherever I moved, I always made a way to make a community of people around me who thought the way that I thought, because most people didn't. I think an image formed, and then I was collected with them for a while. I mean, I, there's like multiple collectives that I've been a part of. And, you know, I don't think artists can make it without community. I don't think it's possible to be an artist or a writer and not, if you want to get to a certain echelon in your career, you can't do that by yourself. There's, if you see somebody that's by themselves, trust they are not. There's a whole bunch of people around them who are doing some serious heavy lifting, emotional heavy lifting, sometimes financial. I mean, my family were pretty much bankrolling me for a long time. God bless them, you know what I mean? Well beyond the time that they should have been bankrolling me. You know, but they, obviously had some kind of belief that I was going to be some shit. <laughs> I don't know what they thought. Or that I was going to get over it at some point and get a job. Tattooing the mother line. This is an older piece, and I'll read this one about the women in my family. Tattooing the mother line. I am possessed by arrows slipping back in a black leather armchair that squeaks when I move. A steady hand girl who shares my zodiac penetrates the freshly shorn, thin brown skin of my upper arm with an ebony ink dip needle sharp as the arrow of Cupid. She and I talk shop over the low humming, the tiny pricking and dragging of her stylist fingertip, engraving me with the names of three generations of women who walk the long path to get me here. When her moving hand becomes uncomfortable, I flex my toes to feel the slapping of my sandal against the sole of my right foot and lose myself in the funk of the Ohio players thumping from the small gray speakers that rest on a table in the far corner of the white room. When she is done, we admire the elegance of my angry, scripted bicep, slick with Vaseline, and step outside for a smoke. Earliest inspirations, Essie Hinton, Judy Bloom. The Outsiders was a really big, like when I think about like books that were like kind of epic books that shaped thinking, The Outsiders was definitely like one of the first ones for me. You know, it was something about the 1950s, something about rebel culture, something about being underprivileged, the underdog. Um, you know, the greasers versus, you know what I'm saying? You know, like versus the socks. Like there was just something that I really loved about the underdogs winning, you know, even if it was just winning with love, with each other, the commun communion that they had with each other. So that was like a really big um, influence in my, in my life. And I remember the, reading that book on my bed, got to the last page and started all over again. Like I went right back to the beginning. Like, you know, and it's only a few books in my life that I've done that with. Like I had to go right back into this world because it was so fulfilling for me, you know? A lot of my influences are, were our writers, you know? Later on it became William Burroughs, Anais Nin. 
um, Toni Morrison, of course, Octavia Butler, of course. Because mostly what I'm doing in my visual art is I'm translating things that I've read into pictures for people. You know what I mean? Like, I don't think that a lot of, I mean, I've never really said it in that kind of reductive way, but I do think that a lot of my visual outpouring is me recreating things that I've read that are in my imagination and wanting to bring life to those images. You know what I'm saying? Right? So, you know, when a collage practice came in, I think as a result of many things, you know, my love of music had a heavy influence on collage, my collage practice. I always really go back to hip hop and the idea of sampling, taking something from the past and then remixing it and turning it into something else. I mean, the power of the sample and the power of collage is that all of these little fragments of things have echoes of something. So it's like you're pulling in a whole world, even from a fragment, and you're inserting it into a new world, but it still has the echoes of that old world, right? So when people are, see a collage and they're like, oh my God, I'm like, of course, because it has all of these echoes of things that remind you of something. You know what I'm saying? So to me, the collage, the collage work um, is, an, is a connection of a lot of things, the literary world, the musical world, um, pop culture world. You know, I loved magazines as a kid, still do. I was just talking to Eric about getting these magazines back in the store. Because that's where I used to get my magazines to do my collages, right? Back in the day, when I first moved here. You know, I would go into his store and be like, this is the dopest magazine section of my whole life, and I'm just going to peruse this here and see what I can afford. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because I was a broke artist. So I'm like, what can I buy today? One magazine. For $8. Because <laughs> it's a journal. Because it's a journal from a whole other country.